dear friends today i'm going to share with you the thought about 18 siddhas and vedatriyam as we all know the there were 18 south indian siddhas uh, so who are siddhas siddhas were typically first scientists saints doctors alchemists and mystics all in one they wrote their findings in the form of tamil poems on palm leaf manuscripts these are still owned by the libraries in our country in this way siddhas developed a native me- medicine system a rustic form of healing they are also believed to be founders of various martial arts so tamil siddhas were the first to develop pulse reading they have also written many religious poems it is believed that most of them have lived for ages in the in tamil nadu so the 18 siddhas are agastyar tirumular bogar kamalamuni korakar idaikadar ramadevar vanmihar kalangi pambati siddhar danvantri sundranandar padanjali konganar kudambai siddhar machamuni sattainadar and karura so these siddhas devised a lifestyle for themselves so today we are going to see about their three virtues which they followed in their life so the method of lifestyle laid by siddhas were common to human kind which is always relevant to all the countries to all the people all kinds of people the siddhas have conveyed such methods to mankind in short they have laid three principles to live a fulfilled life namely mahilbhogam eedal and iravamai through these three pr- philosophies they have attracted and created a bond between the people all around the world and conveyed their path of virtue in living a fulfilled life so the word mahil bhogam should be understood in a right way the second part of the word bhogam refers to the pleasures experienced through our senses along with contentment without leading to any wrong outcomes they have showed a lifestyle which involves observing measure and method to enjoy pleasures by utilizing our senses this was the first knowledge conveyed by them to enjoy the pleasures they have showed a lifestyle in which we know the measure and method for utilizing our senses this is the knowledge given by them when we are experiencing a pleasure through our sense organs in that instance the biomagnetism within the individual who experiences that pleasure transforms into tanmatras namely pressure sound light taste and smell according to the things which it comes in contact with it gets perceived as pleasure or pain or other emotions when the biomagnetism within the body gets transformed through the sense organs the first thing to be considered is that the conversion endured by the sense organs should be within its limit for instance the biomagnetism in a body gets expelled continuously by transforming into the five tanmatras namely pressure sound light taste and smell both a body and mind functions happen through them so when the biomagnetism transformed into pressure sound light taste and smell in particular those in particular sense organs the molecular structure of these organs undergo changes so when these transformations occur in proper limits which can be endured by the sense organ it is experienced as pleasure and when it goes beyond the limits 
of its endurance, then the molecular structure of the sense organs gets disturbed and as a result undergoes changes inducing pain. Let us take an example for explaining this. For instance, the five kinds of transformation undergone by bio biomagnetism within the human body are experienced as feelings. This collective function, which always transforms into pressure, sound, light, taste and smell, continuously expels from our body in the form of waste. Through the sense of touch, it is perceived in the skin. Taste is perceived through the tongue. Smell is perceived through nose. Light is perceived through eyes. Sound is perceived through ears. So all these five sense organs help us to cognize the surroundings. If the outgoing biomagnetism is said to be one unit, when we get to come in contact with objects through our sense organs, our biomagnetism gets transformed and raised races to the level of that object's pressure, sound, light, taste, or smell. Let us take an example. As you can see in the slide, one unit of biomagnetism is constantly expelled from our ears. When 10 units of sound wave emanated from somewhere outside, spreading throughout its vicinity, comes in contact with our ears, that is 10 unit and ours is one unit. Since it couldn't travel beyond, it is reflected back. So once returned, it forms a connection between our body's biomagnetism and within the sound. As a result, our biomagnetism is spent by the same racing to 10 units, similar to that of the sound, which was got externally then only we will cognize that sound. The truth is that we have not felt the sound which came from outside. That sound has triggered a change in our body's biomagnetism and made it to raise to that level. Its present state was changed from one unit to 10 units. Between one and 10, nine units have got raised. It's this difference which is cognized by us as feeling of sound. We think that we are listening to the sound outside us, but that is not the case. That sound stimulates the sound within us. We cognize the difference between the initial state and the raised state. Similarly, when we come in contact with any kind of object, we cognize only the raised level of a body's biomagnetism through that specific sense organ from its normal level, which is one unit, to whatever that particular object's level of biomagnetism is. Hence, our ancestors compares it with the incident where a dog keeps biting a bone which doesn't have any flesh over it. After some time, a piece of bone pierces the dog's palate and it starts to bleed. The dog still keeps on biting the bone thinking that the taste of the blood comes from the bone. Without knowing this, the dog keeps on biting the bone and injures its mouth. Similarly, man thinks that pleasure comes from outside him and further he keeps on spending all his body's life force and ends up broken in a disease stage. So, with whatever object we come in contact with, we can enjoy pleasure up to the extent which our sense organs could endure. The pleasure remains to be a pleasure when we observe, measure and stay within the limit. When we go beyond the endurance of our sense organs, we end up in spending, spending excess of our biomagnetism and make it drain. This drain of biomagnetism can cause the organs of a body or brain or even a sense organs to slow down its functions resulting in damage or disease. So when the pleasure exceeds its gradual transformation, it exceeds, it gradually transforms into pain. In the word Mahil Bogam, to make the pleasure constant, 
we should stay conscious and observe measure and method when we come in contact with any object. Say for example, when we eat a food, it gives pleasure. But when we keep on eating the same, we will no longer feel it as pleasurable. So when we think what, ha what is happening, we can understand that if we consider that the pleasure comes from the food, the more and more we eat, the pleasure also should keep increasing. But this doesn't happen. At one stage, we begin to feel discomfort in our body in the form of pain. Hence, on our body rather than, hence, it, it purely depends on our body rather than that object. Thus, in each and every function of our sense organs and the object that we come in contact with, our sense organs, we have to experience it by observing measure and method. To observe measure and method, we have to understand our body, understand our life force, and also understand the biomagnetism which constantly emanates from the life force particles, and also understand the mind. Born of the six transformations of biomagnetism, cognizes the other five transformations of biomagnetism, such as pressure, sound, light, taste, and smell. Only when we understand all these four things, we can attain a clear definition of the word Mahil Bogham. Hence, any pleasure that which is com commensurate with the body, with the life force, with the consciousness, with the biomagnetic force can be experienced and enjoyed. And this is the idea behind the word Mahil Boham. So under measure and method, we, can, we have to follow in five things, namely food, work, rest, sex, and thoughts. So these are inevitable in the life of any individual. None of the above should be neglected, neglected or indulged in, in excess or improperly. When this principle is observed strictly, pleasures last and the body and mind remain healthy. Let us take an example. When we are feeling hungry, we eat food. If we don't eat food at the right time, if we neglect the hunger, it gives rise to problems. Basically, what is hunger? Hunger arises when the urgent need to replace the energy particles expelled from the body during the course of its normal functions gives rise to a pulling sensation all over the body. This feeling is reflected in the di digestive system, which forms the primary source of nourishment for the body. So when we neglect the hunger, it gives rise to problems. Lack of food gives rise to two types of problems. One, the hydrochloric acid produced by the body to assist digestion begins to act on the walls of the stomach, leading to pain and ulceration. Secondly, lack of nourishment leads to weakness and other elements. The food which is kept out, secondly, when we see on the second part, which is overindulgence, the food which is kept out turns rancid with time and becomes unfit for consumption. In the same manner, excess food due to overeating, which the body is unable to digest and absorb, turns sour and rancid. This rancid food produces gas, which seeps through the walls of the stomach and intestine and finds its way into the bloodstream. This, this causes severe elements to our body. So we should not overindulge in any of the five things. Thirdly, improper food habits. Sudden changes in the dietary habit can harm the body. People used to certain food like rice or wheat should not switch over to ragi or other items suddenly because it can, hand, it can have adverse effects on the body. The digestive system used to absorbing nutrition from a particular type of food may not be able to adjust itself to the sudden changes. Hence, these are the effects of improper food. Similarly, even in work, rest and sex and thoughts, we have to observe measure and method. If any one of these is neglected or indulged in, in excess or improperly, 
dispute occurs between the body and the mind which results in pain and disease so when we see work so the similar three principles apply even for work which are neglecting overindulgence and improperly working let us see if we neglect to work the life energy particles which have to be expelled from the body during the course of its function does not expel and get stagnated this results in disease when one is indulged in excess work energy particles will be expelled in excess and causes it to drain this leads to tiredness if we do any improper job for example a person who does a computer job cannot switch immediately to a road worker's job like lifting mud and stones this disrupts the body functions hence to experience all these superficially we should maintain neglect sorry we should maintain measure and method in all the five activities such as food work rest sex and thoughts so all these five defines the word mahil boham boham is nothing but the pleasure which is to be experienced by us continuously so hence to experience all these superficially we should connect the past experiences with present circumstances and future results and thereby plan to observe measure and method at all times so this is the meaning of the word mahil boham man who possesses the ability to ability to understand the workings of body and mind life energy and divine exist on a plane far above the other living things so when we see the second principle which is evil this is the sixth sense a faculty of other living creatures have not been endowed which is present only with mankind the sixth sense is that which which is capable of cognizing and relating with the functions occurring within all the objects within the universe it is an intricate and clear knowledge which exist within the man in the same manner the six senses are capable of controlling the organs within the body which are called gnanendriyas and karmendriyas so man has the ability to control and understand the workings of body mind life energy and also the divine hence he exists on a plane far above the other living creature possessing these qualities of the body and mind man should put it to good practice and hone his qualities in a right in a righteous and honest way thereby he can hone his skills and become talented once man achieves this he can not only acquire all the things needed for him but also help 100 to 1000 others that much energy lies within every individual hence every individual should cultivate good thoughts and good talent to constantly help those who are in need since he'll always have excess energy so the word evil describes charity that each and every individual on the world should do to those who are in need of help only through charity one can attain knowledgeable life filled with love and compassion it also paves way for self realization and quality of living without inflictive pain to other living things all these will be cognized as we all know at the end of meditation in a twofold moral principle we tell that i in my lifetime will not cause pain to others physically or mentally and to the extent possible i will remove the pain of others it is this mentality to help others and remove their pain which is said as evil by our siddhas in olden days hence man is always in a situation where he needs the help of other people in some way or other hence we have to take an oath that i will constantly help to the extent possible to those who are in need with the aid of one's wealth 
skills age job knowledge physical prowess one should do the duties such as safeguarding one's own body family relatives society country and finally the world and plan with precision to serve the society and the world world constantly and always be ready to serve people who are in need for an individual to constantly serve others he should have good health and he should always hone his own skills with self contentment and keep on improving his talent so this qualities enables a person to always be compassionate and help and keep on helping others constantly to the extent possible he should remove the pain of others and render his aid through his aid to them when he has developed his skills and is constantly ready to help others to any extent he will achieve the consigns of an extremely wealthy person that is called as magnanimity hence he will have a generous heart he will never have any deficit of things as a result he will not ask or expect aid from other person to expect something from someone is begging hence one should always learn to be able to give things and help others with generosity idal is a philosophy which describes all these virtues as we all know in early days siddhas uh, always lived on the principles of mahil boham and idal so now let us see the third principle which is iravamai this is one of the most important qualities which ancient sages possessed this illustrates even more a higher and specialized culture nature of consciousness and morality of the siddhas as we all know body mind consciousness biomagnetism only when these four things are understood clearly a man can understand the nature behind the science of life force circulation present and stagnation within the body how are the life force particles present in the body how does the particle circulate within the body how does a life force particle function and how does consciousness work within these life force particles so all these questions will be answered as follows the skills and the ability to make the life force particles function as per one's consciousness occurs once a person achieves this iravama stage hence the life force cannot go out from one's body without his knowledge only when he desires to die he can stop the functions of his body and mind thus death will not occur to him without his knowledge man has born in this world with a magnanimous purpose to attain the knowledge and self realization within himself every individual has to attain perfection realize the greatness of nature and become one with the divine state this is the purpose behind human birth and the reason why nature has endowed man with the sixth sense that is his ability to merge his consciousness with divine state and blend with nature so to attain this purpose man has to overcome his three sin imprints in his consciousness namely ego imprints and illusion also known as with or without knowing that ego sinful imprints and illusion are the evil temperaments man have continuously learn to adapt it 
So this has to be overcome through diligent efforts and suitable practices and replaced by the noble qualities which he will realize the in which he will realize the God which is present as consciousness within him. So many evil temperaments such as greed, anger, miserliness, immoral sexual passion, vanity, vengeance, which rule human lives should be therefore eliminated. So the evil temperaments have to be overcome through the diligent efforts and suitable practices and replaced by noble qualities of contentment, patience, philanthropy, chastity, parity and forgiveness respectively. So one of the specialized abilities of man is that he realized the consciousness as absolute space, life force and body. In the middle of this life, if he dies, then it is a loss for him since he will not attain the true purpose of his birth. One of the specialized abilities of man is to cognize life force particles and understand the life force skill to make it function and permanently remain within the body according to his own desire. Hence, one can through his body whenever he wishes, thus not Thus, one can attain death whenever he wishes and thus natural death will never occur to him. Siddhars have found a method and named it as Jiva Samadhi or deathless existence. So as we all know, the sixth sense in, in man is capable of comprehending the laws of nature and prevailing over them to a certain extent. This ability enables him to put off death by controlling the loss of life energy particles from the body. In order to achieve this, the quantity of the life energy particles and the level of biomagnetism in the body have to be high. Further, the sexual vital fluid has to be thickened and pure. This is important. Only the presence of an abundant quantity of sexual vital fluid, pure and thick in its consistency, can make the attempts to delay the onset of old age, put off death, maintain a youthful appearance and good health successfully. The practice of Kaya Kalpa is inevitable for this. This is the reason why our Guru Sri Yogi Raj Vedatri Maharishi have laid the concepts from the ancient Siddhas and devised a wonderful practice of simplified Kaya Kalpa Yoga. So thickening of the sexual vital fluid, the container of the life energy particles, prevents the exit of the particles from the body. When the need to live no longer exists, the functioning of the mind is brought to a halt. When both the body and mind cease to function, and yet the life energy particles remain within the body, it is considered jiva samadhi or a state of deathless existence. In the case of people who have embraced Jiva Samadhi, the physical body does not perish even with the passing of time. It is customary to enter such, per such persons in the soil, construct a tomb over it and install an idol therein for worship. Vedatri Maharishi calls Jiva Samadhi a dignified form of suicide. Jiva Samadhi is a state of deathless existence achieved by dissolving the sin imprints through the practice of meditation and virtue, the realization that the divine state itself has undergone transformation into all the living things dawns. Those who have attained this state, even by living all call as Jeevan Muktar, the practice of Kaya Kalpa expands and extends the lifespan of the individual by thickening the sexual vital fluid and preventing the loss of the life energy particles. The ojas contained in the sexual vital fluid is separated from it and taken to the brain, where it blends with the sexual vital fluid produced there. So, in the lives of Siddha saints, Jiva Samadhi is a state of deathless existence achieved only by a few who have gained confidence and taken the mind to very subtle levels through the practice of meditation. They follow 
the path of karma yoga characterized by three qualities of morality duty and charity and liberate the soul from the clutches of ego illusion and imprints they are persons who have realized the fact that divine state is a life force within the body as liberation of soul through the practice of virtues and meditation takes time the life span has to be extended by postponing death the primary aid of siddha saints who lived in our country during olden days was one to achieve god realization to attainment of perfection and lead a life of constant awareness which is also known as mahil boham secondly to lead a virtuous life where no action can harm anyone whether self or others immediately or later which is called as evil and thirdly attain perfection through the practice of kaya kalpa which prevents untimely death also known as iravahamai they adopted the practice of kaya kalpa and meditation and a virtuous life as their path in life according to tiruvalluvar in his kural kootra kootram kudithalum kai koodum nootralin aatral thalai pattavarkku those who have attained perfection and sublimation in yoga and in meditation can even win over death so this is the meaning of his verse and ramalinga peruman and a few other siddhas have served as an example for the state of deathless existence in this way examples laid by siddhas towards the method of living in the path of virtue jiva mukti can be attained even before the natural span of life comes to an end while still alive by ceasing the body and mind functions and yet leaving the life force remaining within the body will keep it without decaying the life force remaining within the body will keep it without decaying so when one stops his mind and body functions life energy particles and allow only the life energy particles to remain within the body and expanding one self through the consciousness slowly and constantly up to the divine state and remain there without shrinking once the knowledge becomes absolute and total so the consciousness merges and becomes one with the absoluteness in the expanded state hence the lifestyle led by siddhas which is a state of deathless existence should never occur without their knowledge so since the life force remains within the body it will keep it without decaying thus based on these three paths of virtue namely evil iravamai and magal boham teaches us on how human should live in this world according to the existing economical scientific knowledgeable and philosophical systems which has been laid by siddhas hence the siddhas method of life will be novel even to a future generations since in the past decades it has been known to be a novel concept for all the people of all the countries in the world the lifestyle of siddhas will continue to be relevant with theirs hence these are the 18 jeeva samadhi stalangal of siddhas which have been listed in the slides Agastyar has been has attained his jiva samadhi in Tiruvannandapuram Tirumoolar has attained in Chidambaram Bogar in Avinanguri Palani Kamalamuni in Tiruvarur Korakar in Perur Idaikadar in Tiruvannamalai Ramadevar in Alagarmalai Vanmihar in Ettakudi Nandishwarar at Kasi Pambati Siddhar at Sankaran Ko Kovil, Danvantri Siddhar at Vaidhiswaran Kovil, Sundaranandar at Madurai, Patanjali Munivar at Rameshwaram, Konganar at Tirupati, Kudambai Siddhar at Mayavaram, 
மச்சமுனி அட் திருப்பரங்குன்றம் சட்டைநாதர் அட் திருவரங்கம் அண்ட் கருவூரார் அட் கரூர் ஸோ அட் ஆல் தீஸ் பிளேசஸ் வீ கேன் observe the energy of those siddhas who have attained the jiva samadhi hence it has been built up into huge temples and is being visited by millions and millions of people even today so thank you for this wonderful chance uh, for uh, in explaining about the 18 siddhas and uh, i thank all the professors who gave me this opportunity thank you may the whole world enjoy prosperity happiness and peace be blessed by the divine thank you professor sudarshri that was indeed an excellent lecture you have well explained about the siddhas and you have uh, just uh, explained about this kayakalpa yoga which our magrishi was very broad minded uh, to gift it to the whole humanity that is vedadriyam you are very well linked this 18 siddhas with vedadriyam thank you so much professor sudarshri dear thank friends you. if you have got any you if you have got any questions you can just raise your hand she is ready to answer you anyone having doubts or anyone want to question or you can just raise your hand we will unmute you anybody so you are all immersed in the speech today probably i hope yes yes one second it's 